Welcome to the Seasoned Kitten Foster Training. In this training, you will learn about the importance of socializing kittens, the science behind socialization, and how to socialize fearful or shy kittens. Let's get started. You may be asking yourself, why would I foster under-socialized kittens when I could foster fun-loving, cuddly kittens? There are so many reasons to foster under-socialized kittens. First, you get to support a kitten as they learn how to trust humans. Nothing could be more rewarding than seeing a kitten go from being fearful and shy to being cuddly. Next, you get to help that kitten have a successful adoption. Most adopters want to adopt an animal who is already socialized so your hard work helps to make that happen. Your dedication will have a huge impact on the kitten's life. Under-socialized kittens are more likely to face euthanasia in shelters. When we are able to step in, we get to help save more lives. There are just a few requirements to become a seasoned foster. First, we require that you have already completed the all-encompassing feline foster orientation. Next, we ask that seasoned fosters submit weekly updates via Google Form to keep us posted on the kitten's progress. Lastly, we require fosters to follow strict step-by-step -step process for socializing kittens. That's it. The optimal age for socializing kittens with humans is two to seven weeks old. This is an approximation and some behaviorists believe the window of opportunity is longer. During this sensitive period for socialization, the goal is to give a kitten an abundance of positive experiences. We will go into more detail about what exactly a positive experience is later in this training. One of the most important things to know is that a lack of exposure to new things can be as damaging as having a traumatic experience. After the approximate seven week sensitive period, socialization will focus on unlearning behaviors rather than gaining new skills. There is a cap on how much a kitten can change once the sensitive period has closed. When it comes to why a kitten is under-socialized, there are many factors at play. The strongest factor is genetics, but genes are not destiny. Research has shown that the father's personality has a strong influence on the kitten's friendliness towards humans. Since there may be multiple fathers within one litter of kittens, you can see a variation of sociability within one litter. Chronic stress can also cause a kitten to be under-socialized. Much like people, kittens are not their best selves when they are stressed. Traumatic experiences, such as an attack, can weaken a kitten's trust in the world. Lastly, malnutrition and food insecurity can cause a kitten to be under-socialized because they aren't receiving enough nutrition for proper development. Appropriate socialization is key to raising a kitten and having them grow into a well-adjusted adult. Appropriate socialization leads to cats who can learn new skills faster, have better problem-solving skills, and showcase lower emotionality and have healthier attachments to their human. Fewer behavior problems are also reported in well-socialized kittens and they have a stronger bond with their human. They also in turn provide more emotional support to their human. Inappropriate socialization or a lack of socialization leads to an increase of defensive aggression in adulthood, the inability to play spontaneously, and more reactive 
antisocial behaviors in adulthood. In our foster program, we believe in positive reinforcement and desensitization as the best means to socialize kittens. Positive reinforcement means that we use reward-based tools to change behavior. We never use negative reinforcement since felines are not capable of understanding why they are being punished. Punishment, even just a forcefully spoken no, will lead to more fear of humans rather than a change in behavior, which is the exact opposite of our goal. We use rewards, such as treats and toys, to encourage positive behaviors and to grow trust. These rewards should only be present when the foster is with the kitten, so the kittens can start to associate the reward with the presence of a human. Desensitization is the gradual exposure of new stimuli. This is done without triggering a negative response and is done within the kitten's zone of proximal development, or in layman's terms, within the kitten's comfort zone. We will gradually work on pushing the kitten's CPD further and further using the kitten as our guide. Flooding is the constant exposure to stimuli or experiences that are scary and or traumatic to an animal. In human therapy, flooding is also called exposure therapy. For example, if you had a phobia of snakes, exposure therapy would include spending a substantial amount of time in the presence of snakes. For shy or scared kittens, Forced and prolonged exposure to humans is a similar concept, minus the fact that they have no way of processing why this is happening to them. They react on a purely instinctual level and choose between fight, flight, and freeze. Humans, with all of our grabby limbs, loud movements, and unpredictable behaviors, are the ultimate scary thing to a little kitten. Fosters must have unconditional amount of patience for their under-socialized kittens. This brings us to the question of Puritoing. A Purito is a fun name for restraining a kitten with a blanket. It is very similar to swaddling a baby. Puritoing can be very comforting to day-old kittens because it is warm and snuggly. Paradoing is only appropriate for under-socialized kittens when used as a way to restrain the kitten from hurting themselves or others. It may be used during a medical exam, like when the vet tech gives a vaccine, to ensure the kitten stays still. Paritoing a kitten to force them to spend time with humans is considered a form of flooding. Do not Purito under socialized kittens unless you absolutely need to. Cats communicate through their body language and behaviors. Cats use multiple parts of their body to communicate. The most obvious body parts that they communicate through are their eyes, mouths, and ears. They also use their tails, their stances, and even their fur to communicate their feelings. Cats who are well socialized will appear relaxed and have welcoming stances. Fearful or shy cats will use their body to either become unnoticeable or to get the object of their fear as far away from them as possible. They will make themselves very small so they can hide or very big to scare away their foe. In their eyes, humans are very scary and must be avoided at all costs. Body language will help you realize when a kitten is not ready for a particular step in the socialization process and when they need to take a break. 
before working with your fosters, always take a time to notice their body language. Now that you know why socializing is important, you're probably wondering how to get started with socializing. The first step is to set up your foster space for success. Remove access to hiding places that are inaccessible to humans, like under couches and beds. You can use cardboard to block these areas off if fully removing them from the space isn't an option. The idea is to make sure that you can always reach the kitten without scaring them. Imagine you are in a big cave and a giant reaches in to pick you up. This would obviously be very scary, and it is exactly how fearful kittens see us when we reach our hands under a bed to get them out. Since kittens see hands as the ultimate scary thing, we recommend borrowing from a friend or purchasing your own set of gloves, ideally a pair that is made from a strong material. Fearful cats may scratch or bite because they want to protect themselves. Your safety is important. Next, remove toys from the foster space. This may seem harsh, but it is very important to build up to playing with toys. Very scared kittens will be afraid of toys since they are a new stimuli to them. Next, keep a spot open for their carrier. Their carrier will be a space where kittens can safely hide but not be so out of reach from the foster parent. The carrier's door should be removed once the kitten is safely in their foster space, so the carrier can be that safe haven. Lastly, take food bowls out of the foster space. Keep water readily available in an easily accessible space. Just remove the food bowls. Just like with toys, food must only be present when the human is there. Food is going to be your greatest tool in the socializing process. This is the spice scale. The second step to fostering under-socialized kittens is determining the kitten's initial spice level using this chart. You will have access to this chart and all of the socializing materials before you pick up your foster kittens. The materials are also available on our website. Once you've assessed your kitten, you'll know how much socializing they will need and where to start in the socialization plan. For learning purposes, we will assume that the kittens you are fostering are at habanero or ghost pepper level, the highest levels. The primary focus of this next step is creating positive connections with humans. The hardest but most important thing to do is to not touch the kittens. You must resist the urge to pet them because this is the exact opposite of what they want right now. These first few days are critical for the foundation of your relationship with your fosters. They are watching and processing everything you do as either very scary or just somewhat scary. They are simply not ready for attention yet. Feed your foster kitten and stay nearby. Your presence is required at all meal times for the entirety of the meal. Staying with the kitten while they eat helps them to build positive associations between humans and food. Place the food on the floor and sit about a foot away. If the kitten is hiding, do not force them out of their hiding spot. Just wait. Eventually, they will become hungry enough to come out. Limit your movements, avoid direct eye contact, and at these first few meal times, do not touch or reach for the kittens while they eat. Practice this step for two to three days or six to about nine meals. 
Whenever you are in the room, talk to your foster kittens in a gentle voice so they get used to the sound of your voice. This includes talking all through mealtime. Do not leave on the TV or radio when you leave. Rather than helping, it can overstimulate the kitten and cause them to get less sleep. Sleep is vital for processing all the changes they are going through. While you are talking with your kitten, you can talk about anything. Kittens are great listeners. The more you talk in their presence, the more desensitized they will become to your voice. Now it is time to gradually incorporate touch. A quick note about touching kittens, make sure you are always going slowly and that they are able to see your hands. Sudden movements are very startling and can set back the socialization process. Sneaking up on a kitten and grabbing them from behind is also extremely scary. Practice targeting by putting food on your pointer finger so they can eat two bites off of your hand. Offer your hands with your pointer finger out right below the kitten's eye level with your elbows tucked in and staying at least one to two feet away. Once the kitten has eaten food off of your finger a few times, offer your finger without food and deliver a treat with the other hand each time the kitten touches her nose to your finger. Once they have gotten the hang of this, use one finger to touch the top of the kitten's head. If they hiss or growl, do not be discouraged. Just allowing to be touched a little bit is a huge step. Remember, practice makes perfect. These steps should happen over the course of multiple feedings and done slowly. The kitten will let you know when they are ready to go on to the next level. If at any point the kittens retreat and their body language is telling you that they need to decompress, go back to step three. Once they have stopped hissing and growling when their head is touched, Move on to step five. Start to increase touch by touching the kittens while they are eating from a bowl. Touch the sides of their bodies. Touches should be gentle and brief, making sure your hands are moving at a slow pace. Use the pads of your index and middle finger to gently pet the cheeks and under the chin. If all goes well, you can start petting them a little bit more, but stop before they become overstimulated and flooded. Just a few chin scratches will suffice. Do this for a few feedings so they get used to this as part of mealtime. The next touch activity is to lift the kitten while they are eating, just a few centimeters off the floor. Briefly and slowly lift the kitten from the ground for a moment and then place them back down. The kitten will probably continue eating and be mildly confused. They might flee. If the kitten does not flee, then it's time to up the game significantly. Now it is time for kittens to be touched and play with more frequently. Touch does not have to happen only at mealtimes, but should include food or treats to increase the likelihood that they will continue to build positive associations with touch. Please make sure you are not overfeeding and adjust accordingly the amount of food you give at mealtimes. Here are some ideas of ways you can increase touch. Try sliding your hand under their belly, release, and then give them a treat. Next, do the same thing, but apply light pressure on their bellies. The kitten should be anticipating a treat and welcome more touch. Gradually increase the amount of time you spend holding the kitten. If the kitten gets squirmy or shows that they are done being held in other ways like biting or scratching, Release the kitten and allow them to have some alone time. 
Kittens need a lot of sleep to process the new things they are learning. They also need time to play independently and with their litter mates. If your foster kitten has successfully gotten through all the previous steps, it is now time to snuggle. Spend a lot of time holding the kittens and petting them on their favorite spots on their body. They will let you know their preferences. Ideally, you would spend most of your day with the kitten if possible. Now is the time to introduce your foster kitten to toys, at first supervised only. After some time, the kitten can keep their toys in their room. Just remember to always remove toys that have strings or other choking hazards. If the kitten hides, use a toy rather than your hands to entice them out of their hiding spot. Once your kitten starts approaching you for snuggles and playtime, then success! You have a bell pepper or well-socialized kitten. We believe that every feline should be given a chance to improve their socialization skills. However, if a kitten is beyond the age of socialization, we will work to make sure they have the best opportunity to have a safe and satisfying life. This is not a failure and we appreciate all the efforts our seasoned foxers make to help socialize their kittens. Some cats are, at their core, better suited for a life independent from human companionship, but we must still protect them from the dangers they would face in the wild. This is why we partner with community cat and working cat programs. These programs match humans with organizations that need a cat to do a job, like keeping vermin out of a barn or a warehouse. As part of these programs, the cats are fed and provided with medical care as needed. It is a great solution for cats who just don't want to live with humans. Thank you for watching this training. You will next be prompted to take a short quiz. Then we will reach out to schedule your next pickup appointment. Thank you and happy fostering.